Welcome to this morning's webinar about the BioHive. We are excited to talk a little bit about our, our initiative that we have started called BioHive and how we can make Utah a global leader in the life sciences area, in the healthcare arena. My name is Kelvin Cullimore. I'm the president and CEO of BioUtah. Uh, Miles Hansen, the head of uh, World Trade Center, is one of our panelists today and asked me to uh, kick off the event today. We'd like to thank our partners who helped promote this event, uh, the Salt Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, EDC Utah, uh, the Ogden Weber Chamber of Commerce, and of course our friends at the Governor's Office of Economic Development. I'm going to start this morning uh, telling a little bit about uh, how this all came to be, and then I'm going to introduce our panelists, and uh, we'll proceed from there. As many of you know, BioUtah is the state trade association that represents life science companies, healthcare innovation in the state of Utah. Uh, we've been in existence for almost a decade, and we are very proud of the growth we have experienced in the life sciences. Uh, studies have shown that the life science industry in Utah has been the fastest growing such community in the United States since 2012. That is a fact many people are not aware of, and the fact that uh, this, this industry represents a significant portion of the GDP in the state of Utah. We're one of the largest industries here. We at BioUtah have worked with several groups in establishing this initiative that we have called BioHive. And the purpose for BioHive is to shine a very bright light on what our industry is doing to help accomplish some of the purposes. Uh, some have asked uh, about what is the difference between BioUtah and BioHive. And the best way to look at it is that BioHive is an initiative powered by BioUtah. It is an initiative we have begun with uh, several of our, our board members and our affiliates here in the state. And the whole purpose is to help make our industry stronger and to help tell the story of our industry in a more dramatic way both within the state and outside of the state. So there is no real distinction in, in essence between the two, we are partners. Uh, BioUtah is the initiator of the BioHive initiative and we are 100% supportive of this initiative. We have established a charter, it has a separate uh, management or a separate governing body from BioUtah's board of directors and it will be run separately in that regard, but it is still a DBA of BioUtah and something that we support wholeheartedly. And we think it will be an initiative that will make our industry shine all the brighter. So today we've assembled a panel to help you learn more about BioHive and how you can be involved uh, with our particular team. Uh, I'd like to introduce, first of all, the chairman of the board of BioHive, Chris Gibson with Recursion Pharmaceutical. Uh, Chris is also a board member of BioUtah and one of the drivers of this particular initiative. Along with him, another of our board members is Jared Bauer. Uh, Jared is the CEO of Cybus Biotechnologies as well as Ionic Sciences, and he didn't have enough to do with those two assignments, so he has jumped in to help us with making BioHive a, a great success. And Jared has been one of the main movers and shakers behind this concept, and we are very appreciative of his involvement. Of course, we have with us Miles Hansen, uh, who is the CEO of the World Trade Center and uh, Utah, who has also partnered with us and serves on the board of BioHive. And our panel will be conducted today by Caitlin Roberts. Caitlin is the interim executive director of BioHive. Uh, she's also a CEO of a medical device company named Line Logic. And we are pleased to have her here to conduct the panel today. And I will turn the time over to you, Caitlin. Well, thank you, Kelvin. Um, I appreciate that overview. I think you've already answered one of the questions from the Q&A on the difference between BioUtah and BioHive. Um, and I wanna also thank you and BioUtah uh, for all the help so far in uh, getting this initiative off the ground. Um, we're going to just jump right into um, this uh, discussion. And Jared, I want you to give people a background on how BioHive was uh, created and the impetus behind it 
um, and really the purpose it serves in the industry. So if you could uh, give people the background and then really the function uh, for uh, the initiative itself. Absolutely. Thank you, Caitlin. And, and thank you, Kelvin, for the introduction. I really appreciate it. So the concept behind uh, creating a brand for the life science ecosystem in Utah has been around for a number of years. The, the idea isn't new. I mean, I, I remember meetings that I was in when I first got into the industry uh, and all the way going back to 2012, hearing about how the industry needed to brand itself so that we could market ourselves locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally more effective as a cluster or as an ecosystem or a hub. This is a, this is a model that we've seen work both within our industry and other cities such as Boston, San Diego, but we've also seen it work here within the state for Silicon Slopes. And so the biohive represents the creation of a branding effort for our ecosystem, our healthcare innovation ecosystem here in the state of Utah. And there's a number of groups that came together to make this possible. And, and the saying is timing is everything. And the timing for this has just been absolutely perfect. We're in the year of a pandemic where life sciences are high on people's minds. Uh, we have, uh, we've kind of hit the cusp or uh, a crest on the size of the ecosystem that finally gives us the various elements that we need to begin to declare really the power of our system, our ecosystem and the size of it. We've been, as Kelvin said, the fastest growing life science community in the nation for a number of years. And we just finally had all of the pieces come together. So earlier this year, um, the idea of creating uh, the, the brand of the BioHive came out of a number of meetings. And we began, Chris and I specifically, began to go out and garner support. One of the early supporters was Miles Hansen, but we're also happy that we've received support from, from EDC Utah, from Salt Lake City Chamber, from the mayor of Salt Lake City, governor's office of economic development, the lieutenant governor, now governor-elect Spencer Cox, um, and so many others that came together to create this. Um, so BioHive was created and announced, it's been, we've been working on this behind the scenes for many, many months, but it was announced just last month. Uh, and it was announced at the BioUtah annual conference or their annual summit. And the response of that has been really quite amazing. And I wanna walk you through two things this morning before we turn it over to the other group to talk about the various initiatives or, or focuses within the initiative. But before we do that, I wanna walk you through a couple of things. And the first is the tools that we have created to help brand this ecosystem. The idea of a brand is only effective when those within the ecosystem participate in it. So we've set this up in such a way that if you are a part of the healthcare innovation ecosystem in the state of Utah, you are automatically a part of the BioHive. There is no fee. There is nothing that you have to do to participate. You just simply state, I'm part of the BioHive and it's done because that's the way we branded it. The goal is for this to be really broad and really deep. So if you're a contract manufacturer, if you work in, um, in regulatory advice, if you're an attorney who works with life science companies, if you're an accountant, if you're a life science company yourself, if you're a public partner, uh, a city or a university or a community college, all of those groups are automatically part of the biohive. And so we've created a number of tools for those groups to use or for those entities to use that shows them how to participate in this branding effort. The idea being that as we brand ourselves collectively, we end up sharing the message of those individual entities. For example, my company, Ionic Sciences, recently um, released a prep, put out a press release. And at the bottom of the press release, we use text talking about how we were proud to be members of the BioHive and what the BioHive meant. On our tweets, on our Instagram, and on our Facebook posts, we always use the hashtag BioHive and we tag at BioHive Utah. We do that and we've, and a number of other companies have started to do this as well, but as each of the companies do it individually, we brand ourselves collectively. And as, we're as we become stronger collectively, we make those individual entities that much stronger. So that's the premise behind this. But let me share a couple of the assets that we have and let, let me show you what um, a few groups have already done with them. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And I'm gonna start with this. So on our website, 
Um, actually, I'll go to our website. So on our website, bio, which is biohive.com, this is our homepage. If you click up here, we have a number of assets for you. The first one is toolkit. If we click on toolkit, you can simply go here and you can download this toolkit. And I'm gonna walk you through that now. The toolkit was created to do a number of things. One, help companies understand how they can participate in the BioHive, but then also give all of the entities within Utah some collect some information that points to um, very specific data points that we would like to make sure get out there to the world uh, so that it will help us in recruiting, raising money, and the like. So if I go through this, say that we first start with an overview of what the BioHive is. I'm going to do one, two, skip a few. We talk about some of the stats within the state of Utah. We do show very specifically for those who have the question what the difference is between BioUtah and BioHive. And I'll stop here again just to emphasize that BioUtah is the trade association for Utah's life science industry, that they are our trade association. BioHive is the collective of the 1,100 companies that represent our healthcare innovation ecosystem. Very, very broad. Um, as we go down further, we lay out the five initiatives of the BioHive, which we're going to be covering today. And then when we get all the way down to page nine on this, we start to talk about the assets that we have. And the first one is the logo. So on our website, you can download the logo pack. We welcome you and we would encourage you to put that on your website. I'm going to show you that on a website here in just a minute. Um, we encourage you to sign up to receive a free banner. Uh, we want one of these banners in the office of every life science company or any company or any group that serves the life sciences industry within the state. And it simply says, proud to be a member of the BioHive, the fastest growing life science community in the nation. Also talks about the social channels as well as the hashtags that we have already put together. Um, finally, we go through descriptions for social media, text that you can copy and paste and put right into your press releases or use on your website or any other medium that you are working with, as well as the press release talking about the announcement of the BioHive. We also have gone forward and we have started to brand this on our own. So we raised some initial money. Um, a lot of it came from our early sponsors. We're grateful for that. We'll talk about them here in a minute. Um, but ultimately, we have started doing some of this branding on our own. So here's a billboard. This one is in American Fork right now. Greatest snow and greatest innovators on earth um, with biohive.com. Here's one in South Salt Lake. Lab to lifts in 30 minutes. Welcome to biohive. Uh, here's one in St. George. Third largest industry in Utah. Welcome to biohive. We have six of these across the state right now, and we'll be moving them around every couple of months over the course of the year. But the goal is to help educate even our local communities across the state on the sheer breadth and size of our life science ecosystem and how, how much it means to the state itself. If we go, uh, oh, we're gonna come back to that. I wanna go back to my web browser here. And I want to show you another resource that we have. So here's where you can sign up. You can hit request a banner. It'll do a little pop up, put your name and information in there. And we'll make sure that you get a banner. Now we do offer these for free. Obviously they cost us money. So if you're willing to donate, we, you know, we ask for a donation of $125. What the $125 does is it actually buys two banners. It allows us to give one to you and give one to someone else for free. And it subsidizes that slightly. The next thing I want to show you is if you click on map, it opens up this window and this is a work in progress. But the goal here is to find every entity within the state from the from Snowville to St. George um, and east and west, although I can't quite name those cities. I've got Wendover on the one side. I don't, I don't know what the other side has um, off the top of my head, unfortunately. But the goal is to label every life science company or companies that work within our ecosystem in the entire state. So if you pull this up and you click on one of these little bubbles, it'll show you exactly who's there, what they do, what their website is, and you can go from there. This was started by our partners at Salt Lake City, and we're so grateful for the work that they put into this. We're now expanding that. So if you don't see your company listed, we'd love to list your company and you can simply click on map on our website and you can say, add your business. If you click on add your business, this is gonna send us the information that we need to add your business to this map. The goal here is to 
have this both as a resource for those outside the state to see what's happening within the state, but also for those of us within the state to be able to find partners within our ecosystem that we can utilize rather than having to leave Utah for, for various resources. For example, many people don't know about the, the breadth of resources that are available. Um, testing is available here. There's, a, there's many more labs than most people are aware of. There's a, a number of partners, regulatory advisors and others that are readily available here in the state. We wanna make sure that we're supporting each other as best we can. And so that is, that is the map. I wanna show you really quick. I'm gonna go out to um, cvisbiotechnologies.com and um, pull this up. And I just wanna show you how you can add this to your website. So this is what we've done on, on cvisbiotechnologies.com. We've said proud to be part of the nation's fastest growing life science communities. And then we have our little quote by embracing diversity and collaboration, biohives become the fastest growing life science. And then we link to the biohive. If everyone within the ecosystem would do this, we would become much more powerful together, links us together and allows us to collectively tell our story. So with that, let me show you just a couple of things that people have done. Um, people have taken this and they've immediately integrated it into some of their marketing efforts. Um, and what they've come up with, I think is just, just really, really cool. Um, the first one I wanna show you is the Gateway Mall. So the Gateway Mall has um, branded themselves as the, the, where what is their quote? Where lifestyle meets life sciences, I believe is the quote, where lifestyle meets life science right there. So that's super cool. Um, and they, this is their new marketing packet, Biohive at the Gateway. They walk through specifically talking about what the life science community looks like, a few of the life science companies that are there, including uh, Recursion Pharmaceutical. Um, a recursion now is is there and they've also put together a video and I'm going to play just the first couple of seconds of this video for you to show you how they've embraced the biohive brand for their benefit but again it helps tell that story collectively so this is the video primarily located in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City is the gateway a dynamic mixed-use lifestyle destination that is at the epicenter of Salt Lake City's rapidly emerging healthcare corridor, the Biohive. Representing the innovative life science and digital health sectors of Utah's economy, the Biohive includes more than a thousand companies in the space of biopharmaceuticals, medical devices, diagnostics, genomics, biotechnology, health and tech, and digital informatics, attracting a diverse and highly so I'm going to stop it there. But this is just one example. These are actually just a couple of examples that I've given that show what other groups have done with this brand already. And we look forward to seeing what many other groups are, are able to do as well. Um, as we, as we kind of, before we start the next stage of this conversation, we had a number of our partners who have worked with us to help create the Biohive. We had them put together a video with us. And that video really lays out what the Biohive means to them, what it means to the state. And um, as we transition into the next portion of this webinar, I wanna make sure that we open with that because I think there's a few people here who have some pretty important things to say. So I'm gonna play this video. It's about five and a half minutes and then Caitlin will turn the time back over to you. This literally impacts millions of patients. That's real. People don't know about how much innovation goes on in Utah in our past and, and right now. Like there are companies all over Utah that are impacting millions of patients' lives. That's what we are most proud of and that's what we want to tell people. And you can be a part of it too. You're part of BioHive. It's different here. There is an undercurrent of novel thinking and entrepreneurs that want to change the way we approach medicine. When you think about what it takes to innovate in this specific industry, it takes a lot of infrastructure. So there's universities and hospitals, there's public policy. There's just so much that needs to stitch together and work in concert to make something break through and happen for the global patient population. What Biohive is doing is really highlighting this vibrant part of the community here for healthcare innovation. 
Healthcare renovation in Utah has a really long history. We can trace back to the first artificial heart and so many other healthcare innovations across therapeutics, diagnostics, and more recently, digital health. There are a host of innovations that are coming from all across Utah that are delivering new hope for patients everywhere. We're seeing just incredible results in the regulatory environment, getting these products approved quicker than ever and out into the marketplace to help people. The, the story of the Biohive is ultimately the story of us. Companies within our ecosystem are impact driven. They are full of employees who are coming to work every day with one principle in mind, and that is how can we help solve the world's healthcare problems? And all of that comes together as part of really who Utah is, and that's a group of people who are out there to serve the world, make an impact, and Biohive is the voice of that. When we speak as one, when we work together for a common purpose, as we grow together as an industry, it will benefit all of the members of our industry. Biohive is the very thing that will help to foster that very cohesion we are trying to achieve. The more of this community that we can create, the better it is for everybody who's here, the more energy there is. And as there's more energy, there's more interaction, there's more idea transfer, and it actually snowballs. There's this, this palpable momentum. There are all of the ingredients. There are diagnostics companies, medical device companies, now more and more therapeutics companies. There's incredible universities. There's great support from the public sector. It's actually pretty rare to have all of those things together. And as all of these elements start to come together, as we can pull them together, I think that we are poised to create uh, not just an ecosystem, but a life science hub here in Utah. The impact on public health is tremendous, not only for the way that you're going to engage with healthcare, but the opportunity of residents here to find jobs in these industries. It's about investing in human capital. The life sciences community here in the state of Utah is the fastest growing anywhere in the nation. We have an opportunity to, to let the rest of the state know what's happening in life sciences and Biohive will, will do that. To make healthcare innovation work, you need to have companies and government and, and capital all working together to drive growth and success for these healthcare innovation companies. Right here in Utah, we have all of those ingredients in abundance. That is the reason why we see healthcare innovation taking off here in the state of Utah, because we have such strong private sector players coupled with these strong public partners that are all coming together to drive success in healthcare innovation. We want people to be proud of the fact that they are part of an industry that is making a difference, not only economically, but in the lives of patients, and that they are part of a community that can help to advance these objectives for decades to come. If you're part of the life sciences ecosystem in Utah, you're already part of the bio. Healthcare innovation impacts all of us. It feels like right now all of the different sectors are coming together. We have government support. We have patients getting really excited about what innovation we can push back into the system. We're really ready to take an industry that is already growing fast and we can take it to the next level and make Utah really one of the best in the country. The mission matters. And when your mission is to save lives or improve lives, that's something we all have in common as part of the biohive. Every company is either directly or indirectly working to improve the lives of people here in Utah, across our country, and around the world. There's nothing better that we could do. All right, Jared, I appreciate that uh, information for everyone. Um, and I, I think if I was just going to summarize uh, what Jared gave you uh, insight into there is the more that life science companies um, and even companies that support life science and healthcare innovation companies can engage with us, uh, the better uh, equipped we will be to promote your successes and raise the entire profile of the, of the industry.
So, um, you know, as, as Jared gave you a quick tour there, um, there are lots of ways that you can take the assets that we've built out for you, incorporate them into uh, your own media on your website, you know, follow us on our channels uh, to get updates about the industry, about what your peers are doing. Um, and also, you know, send us an email, info at biohive.com, uh, share good news with us. You know, we know that times are hard right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic, um, but, you know, part of this is innovation in our industry is going to help us get through this. And so there are also little wins that are going on all the time in our state, in this particular industry that we want to be able to share with you all. So it's nice to be able to open up your phone um, and get a little piece of good news uh, from what's going on in an industry that is growing fast, that you can be a part of, um, and also learning about ways to get more involved. So please, you know, the more that you can share with us on what's going on, uh, share your wins with us, we can amplify those messages and really raise the profile for everyone. So we're going to talk about the core initiatives that really make up the BioHive uh, organization. Uh, first, Chris, uh, I wanna talk uh, with you and have you share with everyone about recruitment. Uh, we need to keep a talented workforce uh, in, uh, in the industry. And this is, as, as Kelvin uh, talked about earlier, it's one of the fastest growing life science sectors uh, you know, in the nation. Um, how can we help build uh, the profile of life sciences to help keep talented people here um, and also, you know, help offer uh, training services and, and more opportunities uh, for people uh, in the state? Yeah, thanks, Caitlin. So it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And I think, you know, one of the fantastic uh, facts of being based here in, in Utah is that there's already an incredible workforce um, and so, you know, companies like Recursion and others are able to, to build on that already strong foundation. But as we grow at the fastest rate of any other life science hub in the nation, it's inevitable that we're going to create a vacuum um, and we're going to need to be able to augment the amazing workforce we have here with additional people from, you know, around the country and around, around the world. And I think what BioHive is doing is helping us um, make Utah a place that these people are considering. I think all of us have probably had the experience of recruiting somebody from, you know, other life science hubs, be it, you know, San Francisco or Cambridge. Um, at Recursion, about 40% of our workforce has been recruited from out of state uh, just because of some of the special uh, uh, talents that, that we need. Um, and one of the hardest things for us to do very often, and it's really because of a lack of information, a lack of a brand, is to get people to really consider Utah as a viable alternative. But as many of us on this panel have talked about, once you get somebody on a plane and they get here, you have an incredibly high conversion rate. And so the BioHive branding initiative allows us to create this narrative around the country in other hubs, in other states where amazing people work, or in fact, where maybe even some you know, former Utahns are working about what's happening here. And if we can create that excitement, that noise for folks, that signal actually, um, we'll be able to get them on the planes, they'll be applying for jobs here, and that gives us all a leg up. We're going to be able to choose from the best talent, not only in Utah, but on earth. And I think that's ultimately how you build a hub. So I'm really excited about uh, this branding initiative. And in fact, I think this is one of the areas that it's going to do the most for all of the companies. And so I'd ask as Jared and, and Kelvin and Caitlin and Miles have all mentioned that all of you join with us here, put BioHive on your website, put it into your social media accounts, the more that we create that energy, the more that this has momentum, um, the better it'll be for all of us to build these talents. And as you well know, if you get great people to your company, they always want to know that they have other places to go down the road as they develop um, or as your company changes. And so as we build this momentum, it'll be an incredible opportunity for folks. Chris, I, I appreciate that answer. And um, I, I think that what you hit on is is well said. I know that you're from out of state, have moved to Utah, same with Jared, same with me. Uh, and, you know, I've said this before, but I think Utah is a place where it is a reality of our perception. Um, and, and what you said is, is dead on in terms of recruitment. We're going to talk about workforce development a little later. 
But um, you know, I, I think the BioHive initiative wants to be very focused on, on telling stories of people working for the, the companies that are so transformative uh, for, for really patient outcomes. And, and talking about not only the technology they're working on that's so exciting um, in changing people's lives, but also talking about why Utah is such an incredible place to live. You know, um, we love it here. And, I'm, you know, people, you know, I talk to people and they say, shh, you know, you gotta stop. And it's like, no, man, the cat is out of the bag. Like this place is incredible. And, uh, you know, I'm an evangelist and you take me out of this place in a body bag, but it's just amazing. And, uh, you know, and there are also, there are also so many people uh, in state that we, you know, and I, I, we're gonna get to workforce development, but there are a lot of opportunities here. We have such a strong manufacturing sector with life sciences. Um, and I think there, there's, this is also uh, an industry where there's a lot of opportunity for retraining and getting people that are already in the state. Uh, this is an interesting sector where we have, you know, a lot of PhD candidates, you know, your company and a lot of companies where you have to kind of go for a world-class expert that's very specific, very unique. I need this guy and he lives in Switzerland and he has to come here for this one job. But there's also, you know, we have such a, a wide variety in this industry where we can really plug in a lot of people and retrain. So. There's a lot of opportunity here and it can play, you know, a, a role in our um, economic recovery too from COVID-19. So, um, Miles, can you talk to us about why having an initiative that promotes life sciences um, in order to attract new companies uh, and empower the great companies here is so important uh, to an industry like this? You know, that's a great question, Caitlin. And just it, the first thing that came to mind was an experience I had last year so we were in france on a on a trade mission with governor herbert and state leaders and a lot of businesses and to get to underscore chris's point about how important branding is you know we had a couple of biotech companies so we lined up a meeting with ipsen which is a large french pharmaceutical company publicly traded um very large company in europe and, and they do quite a bit in north america so we lined up in meeting with their ceo with their senior team we had a couple of utah biotech companies there and in the meeting i remember sitting there and it was a great meeting, but I had to work really, really hard to help describe the strength of the industry here in Utah. We were focused in that meeting. They do their R&D through acquisitions like a lot of large companies. And so I wanted to help showcase what we have here in Utah, describe it, get them excited about it so we could get them on a plane to come out here to Utah to meet with some companies and just build partnerships and relationships. And we got there, but it was hard. The meeting right after, we went to Station F, which is the largest tech incubator in the world. They have, you know, hundreds of companies, if not thousands, from, you know, Microsoft and Facebook to Adidas and, and other large corporates to a lot of small companies. You know, just about every investment fund in France has an office there. And I walked in in a similar situation, focused a bit more on software, but wanting to build relationships. I said the words Silicon Slopes, and that's all I had to do. Instantly meeting with the head of Station F, there was instant recognition, instant credibility. Instantly, they recognized what we have here in Utah. And so then we could jump right in and, and talk about areas of partnership. And I didn't have to sell as much because the brand around our software industry is so strong, thanks to the incredible work that Silicon Slopes has been doing and the companies in that industry here in the state of Utah. And I left those experiences recognizing the need to build a, a stronger brand around our healthcare innovation uh, companies and industry here in the state of Utah. And when you have that brand, it makes it so much easier to help people recognize the strength and the value that we have here in the state of Utah, how we can contribute. And then we can move into talking about specific partnership opportunities. And as we do that, then that's going to open doors and generate momentum for our companies here in the state. And at the end of the day, sometimes uh, people say, well, a brand is a brand. You know, we're not doing this just for the sake of building a brand uh, and, and some cool, you know, t-shirts and banners and, and billboards. We're doing this because the brand directly uh, contributes to catalyzing growth for our companies here in the state. And that's what we're really focused on. That's my perspective is how can we as World Trade Center Utah support the BioHive to help apply our services, our resources, our grants to plug in and accelerate growth for companies. And as we do that with the branding, then we're going to have tremendous success and it's going to be quick and exciting to see Utah become known globally as a hub for healthcare innovation. I, I really appreciate that answer and, you know, giving Silicon Slopes more kudos. Um, I think the, the work they've done to, to your point has not only become a brand initiative, they have really um, catalyzed growth in uh, 
really uh, bringing more industry uh, to Utah, which will help us as we uh, go forward with uh, digital health, digital therapeutics. Um, and in the next 10 years, you know, we're going to need a lot more backing uh, from kind of the software side of the industry. And it will allow us to recruit much more easily um, uh, for our side of the industry. So I, I think, you know, just like we are growing on the shoulders of what Bio Utah has done, we're also gonna be much more equipped to recruit uh, because of what Silicon Slopes has done. Um, and we will tie in much, much more easily um, with our own recruiting needs. So I appreciate that answer uh, a lot. Um, so Caitlin, real quick, Chris uh, in the chat posted, though t-shirts are pretty cool too and will be coming. Chris, I can't wait till the next time we do one of these and I've got my BioHive t-shirt on and so I can I can rep here in one of our webinars. Yeah, I just want to throw the, out that actually the t-shirts are in a box right behind me right now and they are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And it looks uh, like the, the Chris got his delivery as well. Hey, hey, Caitlin, I know you've got some additional questions that need to be answered, but if I can just piggyback on what Miles said a little, you know, he talks about the power of the brand and he's looking at that from, from the perspective of businesses as a state, but also as a business within the state, the power of the brand is really substantial. Um, we were created in Utah. We're a Utah company. We were built here. We didn't arrive here. Um, and our technology was, was developed right here in Salt Lake City. And one of the coolest things about that is that we feel very much that passion towards being homegrown. And that's fantastic. But it is difficult for us as an entity when we go out trying to talk about, no, there are the pieces within our community that can allow us to stay in Salt Lake City and to succeed in Salt Lake City. And Salt Lake City is, has the opportunity here to, I mean, it, the state really has the opportunity to help us there by branding us collectively. And as we're branded collectively, when I go out and I'm meeting with a venture capitalist out of state or in a different country, bringing that money into Utah becomes easier because I can share that message by saying we're part of the biohive. And immediately they should be able to recognize here within a few years, biohive means that the ecosystem exists, that the talent pool exists, that all of the right pieces exist there within that area, geographic area. They may not understand what that geographic area is. We understand it's the state, right? Um, but they will be able to understand that those elements exist for our company to be successful here. And that becomes really, really critical. So that's the front side of it. And then there's the back side of it. When I go to sell my product after we get through regulatory approval, being able to say that this came out of the biohive also should mean something. That should mean that it was created to the best of standards with a fantastic talent pool using the best in class science um, and within an ecosystem that exudes um, really high class and high quality products, devices, therapeutics, and the like. I appreciate that. Um, Chris, do you have anything to add? You can give me a head shake. Just a very quick version, just a, a real life story. When we raised our Series A venture round in 2016, one of the main investors almost didn't get across the line because we were in Utah and they wanted us to move to San Francisco. And we pushed really, really hard and we got them in. They've now made three investments in Utah uh, since that time. Um, and I think probably have put a total of 50 or $60 million into the state. So I think this is the kind of momentum that we can start to create by just changing perception, right? No, I think that is a huge example right there of how we can raise the profile and, uh, and how much it actually means. I mean, those dollars are very real um, for coming into the ecosystem. And the biohive will be a more scalable way to do that than uh, just raising series A rounds one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Um, so Jared, while I, while I have you unmuted, um, can you share why uh, Biohive has taken on diversity as one of its core initiatives and why promoting diversity and inclusion uh, is important to us and also why we think that companies should take this on as a pledge to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace? Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for the question. Um, I have two thoughts on this. The first thought is that because we're just now going out with our branding effort as a state. We have the opportunity to brand ourselves, frankly, however we want. And this became a big discussion within the group as to what elements are most important 
to those that are sitting around the table and to the groups within our community. What can we brand in Utah? What can we focus on in Utah that as we share that brand becomes a key part of that story that we share that will lead us to be more successful as a collective, if you will. And one of the things that, that comes to the top and it comes to the top every single time is diversity. And it's a no brainer. Um, it's, it's 2020, it's, uh, it's, it's important, it's the right thing to do, but it's more than just the right thing to do. The data shows that diverse companies are more successful. Um, diverse boards lead to better outcomes within the entity. Uh, diverse groups within the workforce lead to a higher degree of creativity. They lead to more successful products. They lead to more penetration within a broader um, market because more opinions and observations and ideas are taken into account. Um, and ultimately companies are strengthened by embracing diversity. And what we have in Utah is a number of companies who are, who are getting larger and who are getting stronger, who have embraced diversity or who are embracing diversity. And as we do that, and as we brand ourselves as an ecosystem that finds this to be critically important, we open more doors for ourselves. So not just within our entities, but also outside of our entities as well, as we're talking both with venture capitalists, as we're recruiting, as we're um, looking at um, potentially being acquired, if, if, that's the, if that's the path for a company, in all of those areas, diversity makes stronger companies. The data has shown it. It's no longer a good idea or a nice to have. It's a fact that it's the right thing to do. And so we have chosen to put that front and center um, and to fully embrace that 100% of the time as the Biohive um, and to make sure that the statements on diversity become a critical piece of the message that we share. And I just throw that to Chris. Chris, you have anything you want to add to that? This is maybe the most important piece. Chris, I know you're passionate about diversity and inclusion as well. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I would just say, yeah, hundred percent aligned. Amen. That's that's exactly right. It's been an important part of what we're building in recursion, um, and I think an important part of our success so far. And we have a long ways to go. So I'm really excited to have you know this whole entire ecosystem focused here. Yeah, and, and Chris, I love what you said in the at the end of the Biohive launch video about being mission driven. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we get to serve patients and work towards something that really is a benefit to society and adds value. And you know, patients we're all we are all impacted by healthcare, right? And 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 this is a, a patient uh, driven outcome. Uh, and so you know, we represent patients, right? And so we should endeavor to look more like the patient population that we serve. And so if ever there was kind of a linear correlation, you know, it can be, it's very one-to-one, uh, -one. you know, we should be more representative of the patient population. And so uh, it, uh, it makes a lot of sense to me as well. Um, great, so Miles, I wanna bring you back into the conversation here uh, and talk about uh, well, we, we've kind of already addressed this, but um, I guess we're talking about sustaining invest, investment capital. <laughs> uh, so we, we did touch on this, but um, it, it, I want to also let people know that that is, you know, one of our, our core principles um, to sustain the momentum of investment capital coming into Utah uh, by promoting and highlighting the successes of the industry which is why it's important everybody engage, let us know what the successes are. So, you know, as we've discussed, we can highlight the profile, share the brand, make this a stronger cohesion network, um, but share, you know, why is having capital come into the, the industry and the network and this ecosystem, why is that key to innovation and, and growing uh, this industry? Yeah, that's a great question, Caitlin. I think Jared and Chris, you know, clearly know the importance of capital as they are starting and growing their businesses. You do as well with the company that you are running. And capital, right, that's the fuel that's driving our innovation. That it, it is helping our company succeed and grow and scale, which then helps reinforce the brand and this, this, this general awareness across the country around the world that there are exciting things happening here in Utah when it comes to healthcare innovation. And I just uh, I think back to, to right before the pandemic, I had a, I had a meeting with uh, the Red Mile Group and one of the Spring, Green Spring Associates, uh, one's a, a, a fund in San Francisco that focuses on healthcare innovation and biotech, 
The other one is back in Baltimore, close to Johns Hopkins. And, and again, this idea that when we don't have a brand and, it, and it, you're talking about individual companies as opposed to this ecosystem, getting them excited about Utah was a little bit more difficult. But when we have a strong brand, then you're able to get outside funds more interested in Utah. An um, example Chris gave of, of, of the, his Series A investor is a perfect example. When you have the brand, it's easier to get them to come. When they come, they experience how successful and the opportunity that's here. That then opens up additional opportunities for other companies. And then what I want to see start happening is to see uh, more local formation of capital that is focused on biotech and healthcare innovation. If you're a software company here in the state, there are some phenomenal companies and funds here locally that you can go knock on a door and through your informal networks, you can sit down with somebody and have a conversation about funding. If you're in biotech, there are less local options of people who have the expertise, funds that have the expertise to invest in biotech. And so it's a little bit more difficult. You have to go outside the state more often and outside the state without the brand in place. It's a little bit more difficult to get your foot in the door. And so building the brand will help attract capital. Attracting capital will lead to more successful companies, more opportunity. That's going to create uh, more uh, funds here locally that the healthcare innovation uh, community and, and companies can tap into. And that's a win-win-win for everybody. It's creating jobs and sustaining the economy. And so that's something that we're very focused in. One thing quickly, um, we have a partnership with the Utah Industry Resource Alliance, a phenomenal group here in the state of Utah. Um, with them, we've been able to set aside some funds um, to help provide grants to startups here in the state. And we're focusing on healthcare innovation where they can apply, they can get some funding that's going to help them prepare to raise money. And you can get expert feedback. You can get some consult uh, consultative help on slide decks, get the pitch ready to go, get some introductions with people who can help uh, sit down with the company and, and both evaluate them and their readiness to invest as well as potentially talk about investment opportunities. And so if anybody calling in is, 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 is a, you know, a biotech or healthcare innovation startup company who's interested in raising capital, please reach out, uh, let us know. Uh, a member of the World Trace and Utah team will follow up and, and see if we can't plug in and find ways to support you in your early stage efforts of raising capital. I appreciate that answer. Thank you, Miles. Um, so Chris, I want to uh, have you talk about uh, workforce development. So we have uh, mentioned this in our conversation uh, and you know, why is workforce development important? We've talked about how this is a fast growing industry. We expect it to keep growing fast uh, over the next decade. Uh, why do we need to focus on having additional resources uh, to improve and bolster the, the workforce in order to meet this demand. This is a key initiative of BioHive. Uh, can you share uh, with the people listening uh, why we want to focus on connecting people to key resources and promote having additional training or retraining efforts? Feel free to talk about you know, the K through 12 network and even the university system or people out of the workforce uh, or people who want to retrain into the workforce. Yeah, thanks, Caitlin. So you know, you need all different kinds of folks to build a company in this space. Even in the life sciences, you need people across uh, uh, lots of uh, GNA areas. And we're really lucky to have fantastic universities, you know, University of Utah, BYU, many others that give us great, great people. But as we grow really quickly, as we talked about earlier, we're going to need more of all different kinds of folks. And certainly it's always possible to go outside. You know, you talked about like the one expert of the world who lives in, you know, some specific place and you have to go get him or her. Um, and certainly that'll always happen. But the more and more we can just build our own economy here by hiring, retraining people. And especially given that the life science industry pays wages on average that are well above really any other uh, industry uh, of, of significance in the state. And so it really will help bolster our economy. And there's, there's a number of ways we can do that. One is we can partner with local universities to help them guide the training of people on their teams. So a very quick example is that one of our data science slash biologists is now an adjunct professor at the University of Utah, helping to train people in this converging field of bioinformatics, machine learning, and biology, because we want to hire those people. It's a really good win-win. You've got, um, and that's a, a reasonably fast solution. 
you've got incredible opportunities for people who are closer to the kind of the, the entry side of this industry in manufacturing, in operations. Uh, and I think we have tremendous talent here, not only in Salt Lake City, uh, but across the state where there's huge opportunities for people through retraining over a small number of years to perhaps come into this industry and again, make those higher wages that bolster the state and, and, and bolster all our communities. And then, you know, we also have to play the long-term game. And if we want this to be a sustainable engine and a sustainable ecosystem, and it's going to keep growing, we can't just work on the end of the funnel. We have to work on the start of the funnel and looking at STEM education. You know, I think a couple of years ago, the Silicon Slopes founders announced that there was going to be uh, uh, computer science in every classroom in Utah. Um, and that was actually something we were relatively behind on as a state. And it was amazing to see that partnership between Silicon Slopes and the public sector make that happen. And it's incredibly good for the kids in our schools because that is a huge part of our future in any industry. But we can actually do the same thing on the biology side. And so we all can be involved in creating these longer term funnels so that when this is a hub the size of Cambridge or South San Francisco, and we're competing for that kind of top spot in the nation in a decade or two decades, uh, and we're bringing in companies from all around the world and growing incredible companies from here, that we can continue to support uh, that exciting growth and to build our economy and our, our livelihoods as a state. I appreciate that, Chris. And I would I would hope as Biohive grows, um, you know, we can be kind of an aggregator aggregator of resources uh, because you know we uh, we have talked a lot in this conversation um, about the ecosystem and the network. And Jared talked about the map, um, but just to be very clear, this is um, uh, an economy for the entire state. You know, we want to be a resource and focus on the entire state of Utah. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that will be uh, geographically specific on uh, what's going on in your area. Um, but we would love to be the spearhead for uh, if you are interested in something specific in your area, you know, we could be a connector to resources. Um, similar to what, you know, Miles said, uh, you know, in both kind of the entrepreneurship founder area, you know, we can talk to you about, you know, you need to talk to uh, this accelerator or, you know, uh, this VC fund or, you know, this specific person, if you're interested in raising capital or these resources for, for uh, writing grants, um, if in life sciences specifically, um, or if you're interested in STEM education or additional resources, you know, we can be more of a connector to resources. So I would love for that to be a, a vision of ours for the future uh, to help with some of these um, additional uh, resources. So we are nearing the end of our conversation. If people have uh, questions, please drop them in the chat box. Jared, um, we talked earlier in the conversation about uh, our wonderful partners who helped uh, promote this webinar. Can you uh, talk briefly about the fantastic public-private partnership that has helped really launch BioHive and get this off the ground? Uh, we have some incredible uh, sponsors and partners that have helped back this. I'd, I'd love to give them uh, so, some airtime here. Absolutely, Caitlin. Um, so BioHive was created uh, within BioUtah, but to serve as a public-private partnership. Um, and so a number of groups came forward and assisted us in the creation of this. And I'll go through and I'm going to read them to make sure I don't miss anyone. Um, but GOED, Governor's Office of Economic Development, EDC Utah, Teresa is, sits on our board. Uh, the multiple members of the ecosystem, um, I'll say that Recursion really let out. We're super grateful for Recursion's active participation in this. Uh, the Salt Lake City, uh, their economic development group, but also the mayor herself has really put a lot of time and energy into saying, what can we do, not just for Salt Lake City, but how can we brand this as a state? Um, a lot of these groups that we work with, it, it takes an entire state to create this ecosystem, and we want to make sure that that's branded um, on a state level. Um, Bio Utah, of course, and Kelvin and his great leadership there, World Trade Center, Miles, uh, Miles and I were having meetings on this early, early in the year um, during quarantine, like 10 feet apart on my back patio on some beautiful spring nights, um, and he, he was actively involved. Um, my companies, Cebus and Ionic, uh, Line Logic, and others. 
but this was set up as a public-private partnership to make sure that the state, the industry with Bio Utah, and then those within the ecosystem all had a voice. And so even our board of governance is made up of people both from the private sector um, as well as the public side. And then of course, uh, representatives from Bio Utah. And the goal there has been to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to align everyone with common messaging, a common purpose, common goals, and to make sure that we're taking a statewide approach as we enter you know, every element of that effort. You know, some people, I think, I think many people don't realize how geographically diverse um, or geographically um, broad our industry is here in the state. If you look at uh, the number of companies that have popped up in Washington County or north in Logan, um, Davis County, Utah County, Salt Lake County, out in Twilla, um, really across the state, um, we have seen an increase in growth in this industry. And we're also starting to see an increase in manufacturing here within the state. Uh, we're excited to see that continue here in the coming years. There's a lot of conversations and a lot of discussions taking place right now as to how to bring more life science manufacturing here. I think the pandemic exposed some real holes um, within manufacturing for life science products. Uh, we want to make sure that as much of that comes to Utah is, as is possible. And so this has been um, an effort to, to listen to a number of voices uh, to create a common message. And uh, we're really grateful to everyone who's participated in that. Um, and the people who are stepping up, I had a call with the Salt Lake Chamber, uh, Caitlin and I had a call with the Salt Lake Chamber just, a, just maybe a week and a half ago. And the Salt Lake Chamber immediately saying, yes, how can we participate? What can we do? And it takes that level of effort. Uh, and I guess that would be kind of my closing argument, Caitlin, is for anyone who's on, anyone who's listening, participate with us, join us. Um, sign up for a banner, we'll get one to you. Um, use our hashtags. If you're talking about something with life sciences, whatever it is, throw in hashtag biohive. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn um, so that we can collectively become more aware of what's happening within the state. And that allows us to give voice to companies that otherwise wouldn't generally have a voice uh, within the state. And then uh, and and share that message outward. We've had a tremendous response from VCs in Boston, San Diego, San Francisco um, over the last 30 days off of the announcement and some of the things that we've put out. We've seen the, the directors of multiple VC groups talking about online about how Utah has all of the pieces and how those pieces have come together. We've seen CEOs of multinational life science companies tweet out um, and include the Biohive message within that. Uh, and those pieces, that already is working. That sharing of the message um, is already working. Not, but it happens as we recognize what's here within the state, we tell each other's story, and then we spread that story um, regionally, nationally, and, and also globally. And it takes each of those pieces. They're critically important. I appreciate that, Jared. Um, so I think that pretty much uh, wraps up the conversation, unless Jared, you want to uh, reiterate how people can get involved, although I think we have uh, pretty much covered that. Um, I would encourage people to follow us on our social channels, again, uh, integrate the information we have on our website. Um, and I think we can probably go over to the chat and uh, go through some of these questions. Um, there was a question about the uh, a directory of services. Uh, the map that we have on our website um, is searchable um, by uh, sector, um, kind of by service, uh, and we might build that out more in the future, um, but you can kind of find a company by their specialty. Um, and again, that the more that people add their information, um, it will be much easier to, to find companies and see the full spectrum uh, of, the, of the ecosystem. So we encourage companies to add their information. We work in partnership right now with the city of Salt Lake City uh, to keep that updated. Um, it's pretty easy. You just enter your information in a form and we get it updated on a pretty regular basis. Um, so let's see. Uh, any other questions here? Um, 
I think, Miles, do you want to answer? There was one question about um, funding. Uh, you mentioned one, one uh, uh, availability of available resource uh, that people can go to for, for funding. I know there are some other grants uh, and, and ways that small startups can get funding. Uh, what other resources right now are there in the state that people can can get for you know kind of the the startup ecosystem? You know, Caitlin, that's a great question. In, in terms of the, the the venture capital, and I'd be curious to get Chris and Jared's take because they know both the challenges, but they've been successful at raising capital for their companies. Um, in terms of resources here in the state, you know, I think that there is. Uh, there is a bit of gap to be uh, to be honest in terms of resources to help catalyze the attraction of capital for companies, as well as perhaps there could be some incentives or resources to help incentivize the local local pooling of of capital. Um, to be honest, with you, I'm not aware of any uh, significant programs. Uh, Calvin may be, but the one thing that I referred to earlier is the World Trade Center, Utah, working with working with the Utah Industry Resource Alliance. We do have several grants that we are uh, providing to startups here in the state to get some coaching and to get connected with experts that can help them to raise funds. Um, info at wtcutah.com, uh, shoot us an email and, and we can get you connected to the right person who can help plug in and help support. Uh, explain those, those programs and, and, and see if it's a good fit for, for individual companies that may be tuning in today. Um, so not a great answer on, on resources here in the state, but in terms of the capital and how to get more of that happening, I don't know if, if Chris or Jared have any thoughts on that. Oh, well, I'll jump in for at least, you know, I don't know, there wasn't uh, anything specific on what stage company, but, you know, if there is a seed or kind of early stage funding, we have uh, Mountain Pacific Ventures. Uh, we also have Med Mountain Ventures. Those are more early capital funding uh, vehicles, but um, you know if they're looking for uh, larger funding later stage. To your point, um, I think we're probably lacking in that field. But uh, Jared, <clears throat> I see you unmuted. What do you have? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that, that, that there's no question this is a problem, right? This is this is difficult. It's hard. Uh, it's hard to raise money. It's a ton of work. Um, but this is exactly why. Biohive was created, right? I mean, this this just it's it's exactly to the point. Is that as we share that message, as we integrate further, as we or as we we operate more as a collective, sharing that message, we put forward the great things that are happening here. That shines a light on things, and we've seen that. You know, I can call and I can speak to VCs in Silicon Valley, and they absolutely know Silicon Slopes. They absolutely know that the right pieces are in place there for a company in Silicon Slopes to succeed. They're not as aware that the right pieces exist for a life science company in Salt Lake to succeed. And this is about sharing that message so that we can up our profile substantially. And I believe we'll, we'll you know, over the course of time, you know, this problem isn't going to be solved overnight and we shouldn't believe that it's going to be, um, but it can be solved. And this is how we go about solving it um, in this state is exactly through efforts like this, um, putting our best foot forward and making sure that, that that message is shared. I tell Kelvin all the time, um, I say, it's time to be loud and proud. We gotta get out there. We gotta tell the world exactly what's happening. We gotta be super proud of it because what, what is happening here is, is so exciting. We have companies that are on the cutting edge in every major field of life sciences. And we and, and what's happening here is next generation. You know, we you you look at what we're doing, the convergence of bioinformatics, and we look at um, artificial intelligence and the way we're bringing these pieces together. And what's happening in this valley, I would stack up against what's happening anywhere else in the world. What's happening in the state, rather, I would stack up against what's happening anywhere else in the world. We're doing some incredible things and knowing, and I, I have a little bit of an ear to the ground in what's to come. And I'll just make this statement. We're just getting started. And the things that are going to come forward over the course of the next 12 months in a couple of key areas are going to allow Utah to be even stronger on that map, um, on, on the map of, of where people should invest in life sciences. And um, branding is critically important that as those, so that as those things come forward, it all goes back to the biohive, which ultimately goes back to even the smallest of entities 
within our ecosystem. And we want to make sure that no matter the size of your entity, no matter where you are in that process, your story is told. And this is the way we want to tell it. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Jared. Um, it's also worth mentioning that we have uh, Altitude Labs, the new therapeutics accelerator at the U. We have, you know, our startup ecosystem in life sciences is growing, um, getting a lot more attention, which to your point will only help attract more capital and resources to the state. And as we can take this big step forward in promoting ourselves as more of an ecosystem and cohesive voice, you know, we will definitely promote our accomplishments uh, in a much wider scale and broader voice. So Kelvin, I'm gonna hand it back to you to close this, um, unless there's anything uh, anybody wants to say. Thank you, Caitlin. I think this has been an excellent webinar. We really appreciate World Trade Center sponsoring this. We appreciate our partnership with them. I will say uh, there is excitement happening in the last 12 to 15 months. Utah life science companies have raised almost three quarters of a billion dollars in capital. So there are there we are getting noticed. We have our ENI summit coming up into February that will focus on this very topic and there are funds starting to form in Utah. And so we have momentum going now and Biohive is going to be the accelerant for that momentum. So we appreciate everybody joining us today and if you have questions uh, go to our biohive.com website. Uh, Caitlin's contact information is there, or you can contact us at BioUtah as well if you have questions. Thanks for joining us today.